today we're going to be working on this 565 New Holland. I got some old school parts here, assuming that's a production date. These bearings are from uh, 1991, so they're older than I am. And the reason why I picked these things up, the reason why we're messing with this thing today, is this baler. I bought it last year. I was going to do some square baling with it, and I've uh, been gone through by a New Holland dealer and made field ready. And uh, when I got the thing, I ran it for about 30 seconds, and, uh, and it ate itself, so now we have to try to get this thing fixed up. Uh, I will say I, I haven't found any real major damage on the machine itself, but basically everything on the machine. There, there were a couple things uh, that I found later on which were actually adjusted properly, but basically everything on the machine that could be adjusted was horrendously out of adjustment. And later, we'll, we'll see working on this plunger here, it's just it's something of a miracle that someone, I think a previous owner, has managed to cram so many shims and spacers on this thing while simultaneously having nothing dimensionally where it's supposed to be. But anyway, so what I ended up doing is I picked up a, an owner's manual off of, off the internet for this thing, it was a used original one, and uh, so I'm basically going through this baler front to back, cover to cover on this manual, trying to get everything right. Now this plunger, uh, the issue with this thing is the, the knives, the stationary knife on the baler and the knife on the side of this plunger which sever the haze that's being fed in. Uh, they're, they were crashing into each other and causing a lot of wear and a lot of vibration and, um, and just all sorts of bad things. So I pulled the plunger out, decided we're going to go through fix all this stuff. I found uh, one bad bearing and then there's those two spacer blocks which ride on these guide rails that uh, one was really worn, I think the other one was salvageable, but they weren't that much money and I figured since I was in here anyway I might as well just replace them both. So here, you know, one thing I discovered working on this thing, could have gone my entire life without ever needing to know, kind of wish I had in hindsight, but one thing I learned is that there's kind of this meme that, oh, you know, it's just, just a square bale, there ain't nothing precise on them things. And actually there there is, I don't know where that came from or who propagates it or whatever, but in going through the setup on this, the manual, it, it gives you measurements in thousands of an inch for various components and settings on this thing, especially on the plunger. That's, of all the parts of the baler, that's probably the most precise thing, uh, followed by the nodders, I would say. But as evidenced by my baling season last year, I don't really have a clue what the heck I'm doing. I'm trying to figure this out. So I'm trying to get everything lined up about as precise as possible. And uh, I think overall we did a decent job of that on the plunger itself. The issue is later we'll have some other things to fix because I shoved this thing back into the baler having every dimension on the plunger uh, to within a few thousandths of exactly where it's supposed to be and there's still just tremendous amounts of wear and play and slop and everything because I discovered that we shoved this thing back in the baler and uh, the baler's out of spec because the rails that it rides on, uh, at least a couple of them are very badly worn from some uh, factory defects this baler's probably had since new that we'll cover in another video because I got way too much footage here. So this thing, wrestling this plunger out, <clears throat> excuse me, this was not what I would consider to be a pleasant experience, but to be honest with you guys, it's just not that bad. I've learned doing, uh, yeah, you can see this knife, it looks like it's eaten some small stones or pickup teeth or something that, that came into this machine. Uh, so. One thing I've learned is occasionally you look at a job and you're like, oh, this is just going to be the most miserable thing ever. You know, I got to wrestle this plunger out. That's like two, three hundred pounds of steel. It's awkward. You know, I have to fish it out the back of the baler. It's going to be catching on every part of the machine possible. So, you know, part of you just wants to sit there. You can see shims just falling out of this thing. Um, <clears throat> and... You know, you, you kind of just want to look at this like, oh, it's the worst thing ever, you know, you just want to procrastinate, whatever, make it into a much bigger deal than it has to be. But if you just actually start working on stuff, you put aside all the whining and the complaining, you might be surprised at, at how fast things can actually get done. That's, that's one lesson I've learned, you just kind of have to power through it and ultimately, <clears throat> you just have to start working on stuff. So... Uh, yeah, and the other thing is I was able, when I went to put this back in the baler, you'll see here in a little bit, I was able to use the gantry for this to take most of the weight off it, so it really wasn't that bad to shove in there. It's frustrating because, like I said, it catches on everything going in and coming out. One problem I did have, you know, I tried to show you guys the good, the bad, and the ugly here, is uh, I realized I don't actually have a proper straight edge. So, <laughs> I said I got this thing to within a few thousandths of an inch on everything where it's supposed to be, but, you know, if, the, if this carpentry level here or whatever is, you know, 20 thousandths out of straightness, essentially, then, you know, then everything's just kind of screwed. But uh, I think most of the remaining wear on this is in the baler, not in the plunger. But still, uh, one thing I... For some reason, I didn't really expect to need a straight edge. I realize it's kind of naive now looking back, but 
Uh, if I was going to work on another one of these again, I would definitely invest in, um, in a, probably about a four foot one because some of these spans over this thing, they're actually fairly large. Um, so yeah, that's the main lesson I learned in this. Balers are actually surprisingly <laughs> precise on the inside. If things are out by a little bit, this thing's going to be hammering and beating itself to death. So I'm doing what I can to get things back here as well as I can. So I got this plunger back together and then cleaned up the area that holds the stationary knife in the baler and reinstalled that as well. Uh, one thing I will say New Holland did a great job on is both of these knives are the same part number, they're just indexed different ways. So uh, they say there's three things, well they say there's two things, I added the third one at the end. They say there's three things you're never supposed to do with a square baler. Store it outside, that one's fairly obvious. Uh, pressure wash it because this washes away the grease on everything and it forces water into all the bearings and moving parts and everything. And the third thing you're really not supposed to do with a square baler is depend on the thing. And I have done all three uh, baler sins. <laughs> and uh, so it was kind of, uh, you know, I've learned a lot in the last season here. The main thing I learned is that. Uh, you know, going into this, I thought that new equipment was very expensive. What I learned is it's actually not. I mean, and you even know to the penny what it's going to cost you to own it. What's really expensive is used equipment that can't get the job done and basically costs you your season. Uh, but I decided that I was going to take the calculated risk on pressure washing this because we're working on various parts of this. Like after this, I moved back and started uh, working on the knotters once we got, you know, this plunger in here and running decently. And there's so much grease and oil and like decomposed rank hay and fire ant areas in this baler. It was actually something of a chore to be able to work on it. So I figured I was going to take a chance on pressure washing it. Normally it's not something I'd really want to do, but this is possibly the first time this baler's ever, you know, been pressure washed. I mean, maybe there's really no way to know about that kind of thing, but everything was so nasty. And, and I mean, I, yeah, there were entire grease fittings. I didn't even know they were under under all the loads of crap on this. So I decided I was gonna clean it up and then work on forcing this plunger back in here. So that pivoting arm that I just uh, blocked up that I'm blocking up now on some wood, that is held down by some springs which we've removed and that kind of mashes the hay all together and it has something to do with bail density. And uh, so I kind of had to pin that out of the way and basically just work this plunger back into the machine. What's really nice is this thing has, uh, for lack of a better term, a full chute on the back of it here that the bale comes out. Some of them have a quarter turn chute, which is just like one rail, so it tips the bale on its side. And um, so that made it really easy because I had this nice platform at almost the perfect height where I could just set the plunger and then that made it really, really easy to work it like back into the machine itself. So uh, it, it was pretty awkward shoving this thing in here. There's, there's no two ways around that. So what I ultimately did is I took some, uh, some odds and ends. This is just like a random piece of pipe. And I, I've got that in there. I'm trying to push on it. There's these um, cast iron members, six of them that come into the rear of the bale chute here. And so I kind of had to take some like scrap metal and, and hold those up with that as well. But ultimately we were able to get this thing in here and uh, so I think the next big issue is going to be getting this set up so it rides properly on the rails, which like I said, one of them is really, really out of spec, probably from the factory. We'll talk about that in the next video here. And uh, the others are just very, very badly worn. But I feel like this is um, a major milestone for me in a way working on this plunger because you know you look at a plunger repair that's like possibly the most you know advanced that well it's probably not the most advanced thing it's probably one of the most advanced things you can do on a baler it's something a lot of people put off and what I learned on this is there's really no reason to fear it I mean it's it really wasn't that hard it is a little heavy I would try to have the gantry or front end loader around if I was gonna do this again and make sure I had a proper straight edge beforehand you know buy one even a cheap one would probably be fine for this 
or you know borrow one from a machinist buddy or something along those lines but uh, there was a lot of progress that was made in this video you know we got we got the old bearings out of this thing we got the old um, the old spacer blocks changed out and a handful of adjustments made on this thing in this machine it is so much nicer to work on now that it's been pressure washed so once we get this in here we got to get it running properly thanks for watching don't forget to rate comment and subscribe for more I hope to see you in the next video